as a quick prelude to this video review, uh, this is this one's a little bit, I'll say, awkward for me. Um, unlike the Magi Dragon and the Pet Striker, uh, where I saw both Magi Ranger and Decker Ranger as well, no, actually I didn't watch Mystic Force, but I did see uh, Power Rangers SPD. Unlike those two, um, I did see Power Rangers Ninja Storm, but I haven't seen Hurricane yet. So when I look at the Furai Maru, I can't help but think Mini Zord. Terrible as that name is, this to me is the Mini Zord. So uh, I don't know how to pronounce the names or the attacks or um, anything of that nature. It's just the Mini Zord, and it sounded something like this: Storm Megazord, Thunder Megazord, Combine. So that that, that that's what we had to deal with in 2003, by the way. Well, yeah, this is the, this is, this is the Mini-Zord. This is the return of the Mini-Zord. Or, uh, <clears throat> the Furai Maru. For a figure this size, the posability isn't really anything that we haven't seen before in Super Sentai. The shoulders ratchet every 45 degrees, up to about that far. Now, you can remove this pinwheel thing if you want to, but, well, there's just some things and some stuff, and... Okay, I didn't dust this as well as I thought I did. My bad. Uh, but yeah, it ratchets all the way around and that's it. Now, if this looks a little awkward in terms of having these stick out, you actually have to look at the hands. The hands are posed outwards, like this. It's posed as if it's holding something. In this particular case, it's throwing these... Oh, I don't know what these are called, these, these little mini... Da they're not daggers, they're... But they're not sure, Kinsey. Either. I don't. I don't. They. They. I don't know what they're called. But anyways, they're 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 actually like a, a throwing dagger is what they are, and so that's why the hands are posed like that. They're posed to make it look like it's holding one of these things, and the same thing with the other side. So officially, it's lined up like this. However, if you push this button on the side, you can quickly fold this in. Same thing on the other side. Nope. Get in there. There. So you can streamline it a little bit better, but then, you know, those hands are always going to be posed in a slightly odd fashion. I understand what they were trying to do. I appreciate what they were trying to do, but considering the size of the figure, uh, it, it does have a tendency to uh, get in the way a little bit. Oh, right. Uh, when he's introduced, Furai Maru comes in like a bouse on this uh, pinwheel flying helicopter surfboard thingy and uh, no it, it doesn't attach you just have to you just have to use your imagination and that's it but as you've already seen you can just take this into the back like that like that it fits snugly enough and that's it for the Furai Maru by itself the uh, mini Zord like the previous two Gokai machines, I would be remiss. What the hell does that mean, remiss? Uh, I would be mistaken if I didn't bring up the original Furai Maru. Seeing as this is the last of the Gokai machines that I will be reviewing for CollectionDX.com, at least I think, I can safely say that this is the only case across the Gokaiger toy line where the, um, well, the, the, the Legend Sentai representative that combines with Gokaio is actually bigger than the original version that it's that it's representing. And it's decorated somewhat similarly. The, the, the belly crest, which is actually the, um, in case you haven't seen Hurricane Drew, it's actually the helmet for the uh, Gordai Senpujin, but it just covers it up like that. So anyways, in case you're wondering what that crescent belt buckle thing is for, that's what it was for. Uh, tiny little PVC arms uh, with a ball joint, but... Not a lot of posability. That's that's pretty much all you got. Although you could use this transformation joint if you wanted to. So uh, technically, the original is still more posable than the original, but that's not saying much because well, the legs you can't really do anything with the legs and the diecast metal feet, which have been painted over, by the way. Uh, you can tilt them, but you don't really. The diecast is there more for, for balance issues, something that a lot of Power Rangers and Ninja Storm toy collectors noticed uh, immediately when there was it kept falling over so easy because, well, all the weight was actually up top instead of down below. 
and also he doesn't have the uh, the Furimaru's, or excuse me, the the upgraded version has these little sword dagger throwing dagger thingies as opposed to this one which had no weapons whatsoever. It would just show up and it would do a little song and dance and then it would trans well not really a song, but it would do a um, you know, do the combining and the posing and stuff like that. Which is pretty much the same thing that the updated Fure Maru does. It's just that this version has a few more tricks. He actually does some actual fighting. I mean to be fair I saw the mini Zord in Ninja Storm and it didn't really do anything other than talk like a little robot and that was about the end of it. So seeing Fiori Maru dancing or, or fighting, actually fighting, was a proper treat to see when I was watching Go Kaiger. I just can't, I can't speak from personal experience if this guy fights or not in in uh, in the original Horror Kaiger. I I don't know. But yeah, the the details are fairly close. I mean, obviously the the the, the belt buckle thing is the same thing, and they tried a little bit to recreate the arms, a little bit. Um, and the faces, very blurry here, I know. Uh, the faces are, are pretty much the same thing. It, it, it gets the message across. It, it definitely is the Furai Maru. It's just colored differently, and it has a few more options attached to it. One more time, just as with the Pat Striker and the Magi Dragon, we're just going to disconnect all the limbs carefully. I'm also going to remove the pinwheel thing. And, oh gosh, it's been a while since I've done this. Uh, first thing we're going to do to prep this one, fold up the shoulder joints, push that thing down over his face, and then we're going to loosen this. So we want this to be loose. And that's it for the first part. For each of the arms, it's fairly simple. Go ahead, untub that, push this in like that. Same thing with the other side like that. And then for the legs we're just going to fold over the knee connection points and that's it. However, unlike the previous two combinations, the only thing we're going to change is we're going to remove the hat. And that's it. Once again, fitting the individual components into each limb and the center torso is not a problem at all. Don't even have to worry about it. The only thing you really do have to worry about is not accidentally triggering the gray colored triggers on the front of each component. Try and keep away from those because this particular gimmick has a lot of springs involved. And once again, you can trigger each component individually by turning the wheel clockwise one position for each limb, although sometimes the yellow component will stick out on mine. I'm not sure why. Or you can turn it counterclockwise to one position and as with the earlier Magi Go Kaio, there's a little bit of maintenance we have to take care of before the thing is complete. So let's go ahead and remove the plank. And then we're going to pull this out. It's kind of weird. On mine, it's, it, it springs, but for whatever reason, when it transforms, much like with the yellow component I was just mentioning, this one doesn't quite unfurl completely by itself, but no big hassle. Anyways, roll this up. You're going to tab it into the top of the head like that. Fold the fins to either side. And let's clear that up like that. And there you have Hurricane Gokaio. Sui-san! Just like with the Deca Gokaio, the Hurricane Gokaio can be displayed with the limbs all closed up, even if the center torso is not. The head is intentionally designed to be evocative, not just of the Fiori Maru because of the display here, but it's meant more to be evocative of the main robo from uh, Hurricane Jr., which was the Senpujin. So the ears, and definitely the chest thing here. Now, unfortunately, just because of, well, reality, um, the, the Hurricane Jr. logo should be this really large dome that encompasses the entire torso, just like it did in Hurricane Jr. But unfortunately, you can't do that with this toy. You're just going to have to live with it being a crest that sits kind of on the, just above the, just below the collarbone or whatever it is. So there's that. Ah, but we're forgetting something. Take the pinwheel. There's a little latch on the side here. Pull back like that. And the pinwheel will actually become free, free spinning, free turning. Attach it to the right hand. 
making certain it has clearance. And then you can recreate the... It's not a shuriken. He doesn't throw it around. He, it does not throw it around. Uh, instead, it's used for, it's used more like a sword or, a, or a, a whip of some kind, a whip with a shuriken, with a spinning shuriken on the end of it. So yeah, your, uh, your giant robot can now hold a giant pinwheel, a giant ninja star pinwheel. I'm sorry, shuriken pinwheel. That's slightly awesome. Or there's always the alternative, which you see in the show. Uh, oh, I didn't think about this. Or at least I don't know how to grab it. You turn it counterclockwise one notch, and bam. And you get all those shurikens flying at you at the same time. Now, the shurikens themselves are permanently attached, although they do pop off for... Do they pop off? Oh, they do pop off, yeah. Uh, just not the direction I was pulling. Uh, yeah, they pop off for safety reasons. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's totally not working for me. Uh, the shurikens do pop off. If enough pressure is applied to them, they'll pop off in uh, this direction, this direction, and so on. But I'm not going to force it at this point because, again, safety reasons. They want it to pop off rather than break. Hurricane Gokaio does fight with the shurikens opened up like this, but... It, it gets a little uncomfortable when you try to do this in front of a camera and the pinwheel comes into conflict you know so technically yeah you can display it with the shurikens all opened up and ready to go but it's a little bit of a mess so you know save the shurikens for a special occasion you know pop them all open at one time and that is Hurricane Gokayo with the door totally not opened up properly. <clears throat> I thought that I should point out quickly, in case you're wondering why it is, the Hurricane Gokaio is much larger than the original Senpu Jin, or Storm Power Megazord, as the Power Rangers version was called. I don't believe that this is meant to represent the Gorai Senpu Jin super combination. Uh, yes, it involves Furai Maru attaching to the top as a, as a helmet, just like what the Gorai Senpu Jin did, but the little ear crests on either side, and especially the, the Hurricane Gear symbol on the torso is meant to evoke that more than it is the uh, Gore Senpujin. Also, the fact it's got more red on the face than the Gore Senpujin does as well. But even though I still really, really enjoy the Karakuri weapons, uh, they do tend to be a bit floppy and flimsy once in a while. You know, that is. I mean, to be fair, I barely use this thing anymore nowadays. But. Uh, I would say that the pinwheel's a little more stable. There's, I'll say that there's fewer things that can go wrong with it, you know. I'm sure I'd also uh, be negligent if I didn't point out uh, an internet meme. I have to wonder what Bandai Plex and Toei were thinking when they put both ninjas and pirates together in the same robot. There's got to be a joke somewhere in there about that. Aside from the fact that you've got a giant robot shooting shurikens out of it all over the place, which is flippin' amazing, by the way, one of the things that's, uh, how can I describe it? Not startling, but a standout with the Fiori Maru set is that it's green. There's two reasons for this. One, up to this point, all, and I mean all, of the Legend Sentai Great Powers that were used for the DX Gokaio, each and every one of them is prominently red. Now, Pat Striker is is used by uh, Decca Red. You know, it's used by the Red Ranger in his show, so let's eliminate that. But Magi Dragon, oddly, uh, is is prominently black and silver, and it had some uh, pearl blue that was attached to it, and then it had the individual Ranger colors. So it was rather surprising and stark when the only color variety that it had was just on the wingtips and that was it and then the whole thing turned out to be red so that was surprising but uh, could you really complain about it it was understandable because I mean hey most accessories that are located in the center torso are going to be red and hey red ranger dominates out let's not complain about this 
As for the other two Gokai machines, which at this time I do not have, and I don't plan on getting anytime soon, that would be Gao Lion and Mako Khan, both of them were dominantly red. Now, again, with Gao Lion, it makes sense, because Gao Lion was controlled by Gao Red, the, the Red Ranger. The same was not necessarily true of Shinken Gokaio, even though Shinken Red was presented as very much the unquestioned leader, and you do what he says, gosh darn it, the Shinken O itself was not dominated by Red. So seeing Shinken Gokaio in predominantly Red was also kind of an odd choice, but, uh, well, that's actually one of many reasons why I don't like the Gao Lion set, so I'll never be getting that. So anyways, that was prominently Red. Um, Mako Khan, uh, I just didn't like what I had to offer. I, I don't like it. I don't, I, I, I don't like Go On, Go Kaio. That thing is stupid. And Kanzen Gokaio is just, uh, the less said the better. Honestly, I feel worse for the Super Mega Force fans where that thing was sprung on them and it's like, ugh. But in each and every one of these cases, every single accessory mecha for the Gokaidra line is predominantly red. But for whatever strange-ass reason, Furimaru and the Hurricane Gokaio are green. Now, obviously, it's going to disappear into the left arm here, and whatever. But considering the fact that the original Fure Maru was predominantly blue and gold and silver, um, I don't understand the green. I, 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 don't, I don't get that. Are they, maybe because we're dealing with shurikens here, are they trying to evoke shurikenger? Is, is, is that what they're aiming for, maybe? If that's the case, then why is this not the Tenku Jin that's being represented here instead of the Senpu Jin? I mean, what's what's the difference? I, I don't I don't quite understand why it went with green. Now, don't get me wrong, having a green ninja running around all over the place is not such a bad idea. Shurikenger definitely pulled that one off, uh, and then a number of years later, uh, Shinken Green pulled that off. So the selection of color itself is is not a turnoff. It's 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 strange when you look at the toy line because, well, the rest of the toy line is predominantly red and black, or red and white, but beyond that one color choice, there really isn't anything particularly bad happening here. Having shurikens pop out of the individual limbs, that is, that is fantastic. That's great. Do I wish they'd be able to separate? Well, no. Well, as an adult, yes, I do wish they would pop off, but understandably for kids, yeah, having 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 too large and too small shurikens fly at you, that that would be awesome, but they're shurikens that are spring-powered. These are not, you know, anti-choke missiles that are, you know, flick to fire or whatever it is. So, disappointing on one level, understandable on the other. Again, not a red flag, not something to discourage you. I, you know, I, honestly, I'm just glad they did that. I'm just glad that they gave us those shurikens that pop out. That's great. That's, <laughs> I don't think they could have done it, done it any other way. Uh, in terms of the, the, the giant gap in the torso, uh, what, what can you do? It's, we're, we're, we're talking about television magic that fills that thing up. You can't really do anything about that, really. Television, mag television magic would keep that down. Um, yeah, there's... The head is slightly confusing if it's, if it's just a larger version of the Furai Maru or if it's the Senpujin or are they trying to evoke the Gorai Senpujin. It's slightly confused there, but... but Unquestionably, it's definitely from the Hurricane family. You're not gonna, you're not going to lose anything by getting this. Uh, am I disappointed that the helmet doesn't flip all the way out and attach itself here automatically by itself? Well, it's like one or two steps more than what Magi Gokaio did, and really for that, all you have to do is pull the arms down and flip the horns around, and that's that's kind of all you have to do. Uh, it does take a bit more effort to get this attached, flipped over, and then fold out the fold out the little horns. So. Yes and no. Getting all of this to spring up properly would have been an issue. So I can understand why they did it. Uh, uh, it it's, it's not going to discourage me. I mean, I've kept it all this time, so you know I'm not disappointed with it in that regard. Just for cultural reasons, I don't quite understand the pinwheel, but that's just me. I mean, did I have a pinwheel when I was a kid? Sure, why not? Everybody did. 
but uh, I, I don't quite get it in this particular context. I may be, I may be missing something there, so I'm not going to hold that against it. Uh, I think the only thing that was disappointing, aside from the fact that it's a frickin' pinwheel and I'm misunderstanding some of it, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a shuriken pinwheel, by the way. That's, that's kind of the, the amusing thing about it. Um, which, which has the, the Gokaiger logo all over it, too, by the way. Pirates and ninjas united, just as Furai Maru states every time the Hurricane Gokaio is put together. Um, really, when it comes to the pinwheel, the only thing I'm, like, genuinely disappointed about, and, like, ah, oh, they could have done it differently, is that there weren't a pair of pegs. Or at least one peg, you know, up here somewhere, so that the Fury Maru could actually stand on top of the thing, just like it does in the show. It would have been nice to have something like that. And yeah, the legs are not poseable, and the arms only ratchet to 45 degrees in that one axis of direction. But you know, you you, you still could have pinned it on there, and and you know, you would have had a pinwheel. How about that? So that's kind of really the only thing I wish they'd done differently is you know, just put a pin on there, put put a little peg and then just have it sit on the top there, you know. Even, you know, you might even be able to stand on it when you display it individually. That would have been nice. But, you know, having it attached to the back is not a problem. Just... Mm. So, yeah, Gokai Machine number four, Furai Maru, definitely gets a pass from me. Absolutely. Do go and get it. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in to the channel. We really do appreciate it. What we also appreciate? Getting comments. Tell us what we're doing right. Tell us what we're doing wrong. Tell us if there's something you want us to review. You know, we do listen to that. Something else we listen to is complaints about whether or not AVA Unit 4A's videos run way too frickin' long. We do listen to this. And yes, I am well aware of the fact that I'm a bit long-winded when I come to these things, but I also believe in being thorough and providing a bit of flavor, of context to these reviews as well. So that's one of the reasons why they run so long. I do have standards to uphold. With that said, yes, my videos do run really, really long. So here's what's going to happen. Some new opportunities have presented themselves in previous years, and I'm going to be playing around with my format a little bit here. Just, just, just a little not a huge change, but it is, it is a change. I have some, shall we say, bonus content that's not specifically related to the item that I just reviewed here. So here's how this is going to work. When this video ends, go ahead and check the description below, and you'll see a link that will take you to a different video that is also made by me. Exact same editing, exact same producing, exact same crappy camera, you know how that one goes. And all that it is is bonus content that is not related to the very specific item that I've just finished reviewing here, okay? I've said my piece here on this particular item that I've reviewed, okay? But I've got some more stuff to say. And if you like listening to me talk more about Super Sentai or Transformers or Lego or whatever, so go ahead and click on that link in the description below and it'll take you to the appropriate place. Once more, this is AVUnit4A saying thank you for tuning in really convoluted. Oh my god.